Welcome to the panel breakdown. I'm your host, Matthew Sardo. We are in the Monkeys Fighting Robot Studio. Oh, it's so good to talk with you about comics again. So currently on YouTube, we are at um, 876 subscribers. And what we want to do is have a massive giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. So we only need like 124 more. And at 950, we will start announcing the prizes to get everybody excited. So if you like what we're doing with the panel breakdown, and this is something that I want to do, is I feel like it's very important to me to talk about the art and talk about like really cool issues and things that do th thing uh, comic books that do things differently than other comic books. Like we should be talking about why the lettering is amazing or why the colors kick ass or, you know, why they used 42 artists and in, in, in colors on uh, the new golden age to delineate time and why it works so well. Like those are the things that we should be talking about. And that's what I want to do. But I need your help. We need to get to this 1,000 subscriber mark. And uh, so if you like what you do, you know, like the video and then hit the subscribe. I'm not even going to tell you to hit the little bell thing. Like, I don't really care about the bell thing. You know, I want you to see these videos. And I'm sure that YouTube will do its job to make sure that you see these videos. So if, if you subscribe, I feel like you're doing enough at that point in time. And I really appreciate that. So... Thank you so much uh, for watching the videos that we've done over the past two weeks and the previous videos from years before. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about some image books in the future. There's a few Dark Horse books that I've I've noticed. Um, and what else have we got? We got some, you know, I definitely want to talk about the JSA book after this. I have a Spider-Man book that I want to talk about. Uh, there's some Batman stuff going on. So it's, I really would like to do like a healthy mix of like, let's, let's flip this over. This is the goal. Uh, this might not work out, but we'll do our best. I'd really like to do a healthy mix of of 50% uh, big two books and 50% indie books. So if you have an indie book that you want us to talk about, that you're like, hey, Matt, I read this book and it was pretty amazing. And they did some really cool stuff with the art. You probably should check it out. Like comment below. Let us know what indie books we should be looking at. Um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Image Comics. I feel like they do a lot of good things. But there's a whole bunch of other publishers out there. Uh, Aftershock is a really good publisher. Uh, Oni Press. Like, there's so many different things. And then there's everybody who's self-publishing that are doing amazing things. So if you see an amazing book out there and you want us to talk about it, let us know. Comment shoot me a message on Twitter before it implodes. Uh, where else can you, you know, email, what is it? Email, there's comments, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. I mean, there's four, there's our sub stack. I mean, there's 452 different ways for you to get in, in touch with me to talk about comic books. And I would love to hear from you. I, you know, if you're like, Hey Matt, I, I watched the panel breakdown. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of disagree with what you were talking about. And you were like, hey, I really think that Batman did this as opposed to what you were saying. Like, that would be an amazing conversation because, like, I want to learn about comic books. So there are tons of places for you to contact me and tell me what I should be talking about. One. Two, uh, subscribe to the, pod, to the I want to say podcast, but si subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and three, what else are we doing? Well, we got our we got our crowd we, we crowdfunder. I've been I've been talking about Jamie Jones's book too long. We have our Kickstarter campaign going on right now for Monkeys Fighting Robots, the magazine issue four. Let me see if I have that over here right now. Look at that beautiful cover. That is an amazing cover. We launched our Kickstarter on November first. And uh, what do we got? About 50 backers right now. Where we The goal for me is 100 backers. I think 100 backers 
is a good goal for an indie magazine. I, you know, I'd love to have, you know, thousands of backers, but I mean, like there's so many different choices out there and there's so much competition for crowdfunding and social media is just a shit show to get the voice out there. And, and then you have the pandemic, which, um, you know, I'm not at conventions, you know, I mean, so it's really tough to get the voice out there, but like for me, we, we've already, we have 50 backers. I'd like to get, an, and we're about at the halfway point. I'd like to get another 150 backers so that we're at a hundred, nice round hundred. You know, if you're selling a hundred copies of your book, I mean, like that's, that's solid. That's a, if you're an indie publisher, that's good. I mean, you'd love to sell more, but like that's besides the point, you know, the baseline is a hundred and that's where I'd like to get to. So uh, check out our Kickstarter campaign. We will have a link in this bio right here. And I'm sure if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, you've probably seen one of my messages. So to the people that have shared our campaign and to the people that have backed our campaign to publish issue four, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, like it is very humbling to see where these comic books have gone or where these books have gone, where the Tales of Monkeys Fighting Robots comic books have gone. I mean, like it's, it's just bonkers insane. So thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Um, and this is the cover by, uh, by Jeffrey Krojak. Like he's an amazing artist and this is his fourth cover in the series. Uh, I mean, and we're going to do a chromium version of this. There's a vintage version of this. Like we're doing some really cool stuff. And then there's lots of amazing artists doing comic books or comic strips on this. And then the staff of monkeys, Fred robots has some amazing articles lined up for the convention issue. So like, this is going to be bonkers good guys. So get on it. There's a link in our bio. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, that's enough self-promotion on that one. Okay, so the new golden age, written by Jeff Johns with a whole bunch of artists working on it. Let's get a nice view with the glare. Not too much glare. Let's see what we can do. Ah, let's do, oh, that, ooh. That's making the golden age look very golden. There is a little, ah, it's so tough getting this to work. Trying to get you the best video quality of a book. Oh, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. I'll figure it out. All right, so this book, I really enjoyed this. This is my step back into the DC Comics universe. Um, I've been out for a little bit. You know, things have been going on in the DC universe and, and I was like, okay, this will be my like jumping back in and let's see what happens with it. There are a gazillion artists working on this and I will do my best to make sure that we talk about everybody. I hopped on Reddit and this is what we have come up with for the book. So Jerry, has, is working all on the 40s and 50s stuff. Uh, what do we got? Diego, the first three pages. Steve Lieber, Victor, Lieber, Scott, Gary Frank. I'm a little confused on the last page, but like these are the credits that we have going. And we're not even talking about the colors right now. So this book right now, is is a book that take place takes place over time and each time period has a different artist and i think it's done so well like this is something that you can't do in a movie you can't you can time travel in a movie and you can kind of put different filters on and you can try to film it in different ways, but you can't do what they did in this comic book. And I've been looking for a long time for what you can do in a comic book that you can't do in a movie. Because some of the MCU films are making comic books are making comic books better than the comic book people. Or not only say the comic book people, I wanted to say comics in general. You know, because you can visualize fights and you can see things and and different things can happen. And I'm like, wow, they brought a comic book to life and they actually made a better version of a comic book. Like it's, 
and it's bonkers. And so I've been looking for different ways that comic books can make better stories or do things differently than films. And this right here is something that you can do better than a live action film. And I love this pan. I love this page just the way it starts off. It's like you just flow. Your eyes just flow through the page and the purple just stands out and you're like, this purple means something. Like, what is it going to do? And I love this, this the sound effect right here. The blues, the colors on this are just so good. And then I like this. This is my art style. This is what I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of this art style. This is like a McFarlane-esque, you know, in the spectrum of McFarlane. And this is what, you know, I was brought me to life into the world of comic books. I read Spider-Man for a long time and then McFarlane took it over. I didn't read Spider-Man for a long time, but I was reading Spider-Man and I had my version of Spider-Man in my head and then Todd McFarlane came along and turned it upside down and then inspired a whole different, whole generation of artists to just turn the world upside down. And so this is a conservative Todd McFarlane right here. It's in the spectrum of Todd McFarlane's art. And I, and then the colors just make it really pop. The cityscape in the back. You know, I, this, I feel like that is a, this is something that Todd did well with cities. So, I mean, the, to put that in there, you know, that's where things kind of really pop. And just the way things are set up. It's just like, it's like, hey, we're going to give you all the foreshadowing in this book and the first three pages. And it just, it's really nice. I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of nine panel pages, but when you're talking about emotion and getting into characters, the nine panel page works really well because it's all about bringing a character into focus. You know, so you got them out here, go closer, and then boom. And then the perfect use of like the rule of thirds right here. Like this is a beautiful camera shot right here. And then here, you know, it's just the action works well. Eyes open, eyes closed, peeking, punchline, close up. And then like, okay, what happens next? Like this is, this is premium storytelling. And we're not even talking about the word. We're not even talking about the words. We're just looking at the pictures here. And then, the, you know, these oranges and these purples, contrast very well the darkness i don't even know if they can contrast they just work well you know they complement each other and then this panel really sticks out so this is a very good use of the nine panel grid and it works well coming across from here you have this big open space and then everything's constrained here like it's a balance Oh, man. And then, like, okay, so you flip to this, and you're like, oh, shit, this is totally 1940. Like, you don't even need this 1940 here. You're like, these are the characters that we've grown up with. This is kind of the color palette that we've been used to. This is what trades look like now. And then Jerry's just doing it well. You know, again, nice open page, then nine-panel grid for a lot of conversation. And then this mix page here, like where he sees, you know, he sees the future, Dr. Fate. And then it flips. This is the artist. This is Diego from pages one through three, I think, I'm hoping. And you're like, oh, man. But I was a little confused on her because she looks like the girl from the previous page. But I didn't go too much into detail, so let's do that. She's got brown eyes. She's got blue eyes and short hair. But like in storytelling, you're like, okay, how do I figure this out? Maybe I would have changed her up a little bit more. But the uniform is there. And I guess if you're an old reader, you know what's going on. Like you don't, you're like, oh shit, that's what it is. And then you flip back and you're like, okay, 
this is the future, this is the past, or this is the 40s. And then 3022, you're like, oh shit. But like, look at these artists. Look at look at these artists right here. This is just bonkers good. And then colors. You got Nick, John, Matt, Jordan, Brad. And Rob's got letters on this whole entire book. That's a tough task. So JP was working with Diego, Scott, Hannah, Jerry, Steve, Todd, Scott, Victor, Brandon, and Gary Frank. See, Gary Frank comes last. And I was like, okay, so maybe he has the last page. But then I was confused. So, like, if you know who worked on one each page, like, exactly, like, let me know. Because I would love to know who did what and who colored what. So I think the colors are really important here. This is this colors are are very important on this. Okay, so we're in the future, and you have a different artist. Okay, so I'm gonna keep up with this. Okay, so yeah, this people are kind of a little. Steve. Yeah, people aren't sure who did what. So it might be Steve Lieber at this point in time. I like this panel. I love when they show eyes like and behind a mask. And I guess this is the gentleman from earlier. And then back to the nine panel grid, like, you know, okay, it's the past. And then this, like, 76, like, okay. It's a little different. It's just a little different. Power woman. Power girl. It's power girl. I've been out too long. I like this bear right here. See, the thing is, I want to know who's doing det the detective chimp. This might be Diego right here, because this is now, but I'm not sure. Or it could be Steve Lieber. Like, I love this, the, I mean, monkeys fighting robots. I mean, there's a monkey in here, so I'm like, and there's a bear. I just I love all this stuff. I love this panel break right here. This is really good. And then they're in the past. Or Jerry, you can tell what Jerry's pages are very well. But you know everything's like very confusing. And then 51, boom. Okay, so this page right here, I really would love to know who the artist is on this. Because this is good. Like this, there's a lot of good conversation. And then like the buildup. Like I see a knife. You see the knife. Like the kid's like getting uber prepared. You know, just looking. The cage. The kid's stuck in a cage. This makes a cage. And then you got the eyes. The silhouette. It's like, and then like, okay, she is not in the silhouette. He's in the silhouette now. And you go back to the eyes. Action shot. Reaction. You're like, okay, there's so much stuff going on here. Like, this blank stare is... It's perfect for the story. Another plank, just focused, and then like stuck in a cage. Focused. Okay, something's going to happen. The reversal. The eyes again. Action, reaction. Like it's, just, it's a planned out very well. And it's framed. Each one is framed very well. This one's here. This one goes down. You go up. Here. Up. Down. Here, across, across, like it, down, up, down, and then just straight across. Like it's, your eyes have a good time reading this. And then boom, oh, the Batman. And I love this color of Batman right here. Again, we don't really have a time period, but we know it's something different. She might be, she's a little bit older. 
because she was scared. I think the first one scared her, and she's been prepared. And then it's like, you know, the reveal. And then a nut transmissions to 30 years ago. And you have another time frame of artwork that looks really good. Looks very clean. 30 years ago, that'd be 90s. So is this like supposed to be the 90s? And then this page is just so good. Bad guys floating over here. And it's the many, de many deaths of Dr. Fate. That gives a very beautiful page. And sad at the same time. But it's a, but you know like it's a cycle. This is a cycle. It always happens. And then we're back. And then we're here. So you, you can tell the flips of time without them start. See, they start off, but then they miss. Then they not miss, but they like take it away. So you have to follow. Follow the artwork. And then she's just pissed. Just pissed. The Joker's son, man. That's a it's in bold print. That's some sexy time right there. You're like, oh, if we're gonna drop something here. Let's drop the Joker's son being Robin. And then you it starts floating around here, story wise. Setting up the JSA. But again, like, you would love to know who was doing what. Okay, and so then this right here, 18 years from now, this is nice. 1899, 1923, 1965. Like this is, you know, so we get some gritty darkness right here. And this is the turn of your hero. And then this page. Who did this page? Like everybody's old. Like it's very like, you know, it's a different time period, but it's a solid, like it's different than this. And you flip and you're like, what? And so this is what's cool. I mean, like with DC comics is that like they have the multiverse. I mean, it, and so they have all the different versions of the different characters and everything like that. So like, you can really play with the artwork and communicate to the audience. You know, like, hey, this is a different universe because of said artwork. And you can let it just be a little bit more subliminal than being like, this is, you know, Earth, blah, 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 blah. You know, this is Earth, blah, 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 blah. This is, you know, Superman... From this one. This is Batman from this one. Like you can let the artwork wrap you up into the story. And and it's it wasn't for this, it wasn't jarring. Once you got into the mode of it, you're like, okay, things are switching now. It's like you got a little now here. And they kind of slowly take a bat take away, you know, this. This is here, and you're like, okay. And you get sucked in and, and over those three pages of whatever's going on, like you get sucked in and that's a combination of the writing and the artwork and the colors and the lettering. Cause this was a very easy book to read. I mean, like I wasn't like tired or I wasn't like bored. It didn't feel like a long read. I was like, okay, it just started. And then just started like flipping. I was like, okay, this is different. This is some nice artwork, blah, blah. blah. And then like voices in my head slowly disappear and then I just start enjoying the story. So this is a prime example. The new golden age one shot. Pick it up from your local comic book store. Check it out. And let me know what you think. Because I thoroughly enjoyed the chaos. And let's get on those creators one more time. Let's see if we can flip on that page one more time. There you go. Because that's what we need. These are the people that made this book happen. I mean, like, it's just, it's bonkers good. It's so bonkers good. And then you got all the different 
I think he gets a different color. Like, I want to check out the Mark, the Mike Allred cover. I need to check that out. Like, that's that's that would be on my list if I was going to be checking out covers. I'd be checking out that one. But what variant cover were you excited about? There's so many great artists on this. But again, I'm Matt Sardo. This is the panel breakdown. I hope you enjoyed the conversation about this book. I enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Um, this is the panel breakdown in the Monkey's Fighting Road studio. If you like what we're doing, subscribe, comment, like, all that fun stuff. Share with your friends. You know, Support our Kickstarter for our magazine. There's so many different things that you can do to um, help us out. I mean, this is, the world right now is an amazing place. You have creators coming from all over the place creating amazing stuff. From content creation to comic books to curation. Like, there are so many amazing things that are coming out. And the, the world of comic books is really bright. I know that you hear a lot of doom and gloom, but, like, it's really bright. So many people are creating such amazing content about comic books with comic books for comic books like it's such a fun time so i'm glad that you are coming along for the journey and i can't wait to talk to you next about the next book and i'm like looking over my shoulder and i'm like all right what book am i gonna talk about there's a spider-man book there's a dollar bin book you know there's a few other things over there so i'm really excited to talk with you uh about comic books and break down some more panels with you. So take care have a great weekend and uh, read more comic books.